I was out here doing a revival at William Keyes Correctional and uh, just having, we had a great time. Uh, it was myself, uh, Brother Jackson, and Brother Iffy, and we'd had a week long uh, revival. We're preparing to go back to Arkansas. Uh, had to be at church on uh, Friday. Got out on the highway and started towards Moreland. And got to Moreland and God told me to turn around and come back to Woodward and look at a church. And we're gonna move from the farm and uh, we're gonna start a church in Woodward, Oklahoma. The next day was uh, Jerry Savelle was gonna be speaking at Faithline. So we're going to go do our jobs at church and uh, Brother Savelle, spoke. And he said that uh, your departure from the usual and the norm begins now. And I mean, not only did it set me on fire, but my wife said, hey, this is God. We got on board and uh, began to seek God on how to, when to, through all of this. Uh, it's just been one continual step of God. That's what he told me. You don't have to do all this by yourself. The only thing I had to do was take the next step. And that's something Carla and I can do. We can take the next step. We don't have to do it all at once. The following week, um, we're staying here. This is actually our sanctuary. Um, our landlord uh, here at the bed and breakfast gave us the uh, use of the living and dining area. And so we actually, uh, the second week we were here, had a sanctuary to meet. God opened a door for me at a job that has blessed us with benefits and retirement, that uh, excellent pay, all the hours that I want. Um, we have a congregation that is very small, but they also are young, and so they need talk and we're teaching right now how to be led by the Spirit and who the Holy Spirit is and not to be afraid of Him, but that you can trust Him. We have been in prison ministry for, uh, since 2003. Uh, that is part of my heart. Um, I have a great love for prison ministry. And one of the bonuses of being here is I'm now a volunteer chaplain at the very prison where I did my own time. And, uh, God had to change the, the state law and state policy, but he did just for me because he gave me the desire of my heart with that. We were eating dinner the day after the tornado and your ministry called and said, are y'all okay? Do you need anything? It's like, honey, that was Kenneth Copeland's call. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just like, I don't even know how to respond to things like that. But, uh, you know, that Saturday when the tornado came, uh, we had had storms all day. Um, we have one couple in our church who uh, struggles sometimes uh, with fear. And uh, so we tried to explain, just stand against it and speak against it and say, no, you can't come here and relax and trust God. About 10 o'clock, the squall line came through, started, and uh, went out on the back porch, spoke against it and went downstairs and went to bed and did not know there was a storm. Um, literally, my phone started going off. Are you okay? Are you okay? It's like, why wouldn't I be okay? You know, uh, I'm asleep. You know, don't, don't give in to fear. You know, just stand in God. And went back to sleep again. And about 20 minutes later, my phone went off again and it was somebody from not here. It was somebody from Ponca City asking if I'm okay. It's like, I might ought to get up and look at the weather. And I uh, found out that the tornado had hit. Not one thing came against our church or anyone in it. God protected every single one of us. We have just continually seen God come into this town and people come together. Uh, it doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It just, we help out. There have been days where you just get down. And Kenneth Copeland Ministries has called me three different times on the phone. And then today, you call and you show up at my work. You made my day. You did. 